And one thing I'm really addicted to is caffeine. Oh, I'm a caffeine junkie. It's so bad, I've upgraded to Starbucks, and my drink costs 503, and I do it every day. Every day, it's such an underrated addiction, right? You always hear cigarette smokers complaining, oh, I spent $10 a pack, screw you. I wish I smoked cigarettes, right? Because at least cigarette smokers share. Can't walk into a coffee shop, Jones, and like, buddy, I'm really strapped this month. <laughs> Can I bum a sip? And you know how I got my addiction? It's because I worked at a coffee shop for four years. That's how I got addicted. That doesn't happen anywhere else. It's not like you ever quit an office job and can't stop stapling. <laughs> and the coffee shop I go to has a tip jar. A tip jar at a coffee shop? I'm not tipping you unless you serve alcohol or work at a restaurant, all right? And I mean, sometimes I do tip because I get a really enthusiastic server who just keeps talking. And I'm like, oh, well, here's some change. Shut up. <laughs> but I always feel really bad about it. I really do. Like one time I remember I left the Starbucks after I gave him all my change and this homeless guy approached me. He's like, hey bro, do you have any change? I was like, oh shit, dude. I just gave it to someone with a job. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> I did love working at the coffee shop. It's funny when you work customer service because you develop repetitive lines that you always say. Like at the coffee shop, I used to always say, have a good one, after everything. You know, someone would walk in, I'd be like, here's your drink, have a good one. Here's your change, have a good one. One time this girl walked in and she asked for the washroom key. So, uh, <laughs> I come from a family, that's my background. Uh, growing up with uh, three other siblings, I had an older brother who was a really cool dude. Uh, very good looking, charming, athletic. And in comparison, when I was young, I used to be fat. I had acne all over my face and I was very socially awkward. And you know Jonathan Taylor Thomas had that haircut where you part it down the middle? Yeah, I tried to do that, but I have uh, curly hair so I turned into a frickin' hornet's nest, right? <laughs> so I used to be so frustrated, like how is this guy my older brother? Like when he was born, did he take all the good DNA? <laughs> Right then, I came through, I went through the genetic cover, like, what the hell, I get psoriasis. <laughs> but when I was 20, I found out he had a different father. <laughs> I know, right? I was so relieved. <laughs> I was, I was sitting there like, bro, I thought you got the good genetics, you just got the good dad, right? <laughs> He's beating me at hockey, I'm like, you're just cheating with your super dad genes. <laughs> Cheater. Yeah, because my parents, they used to compare us all the time, which made me very insecure. Like, they once had a debate on who would win a fight when I was older, me or my brother Marty, right? And my mom's like, I think Marty will win, because he's a street fighter. And my dad's like, well, I think Mike will win, because he's smarter. Yeah, because apparently my dad's never been in a fight before. <laughs> right? Uppercut's way more effective than algebra. <laughs> and even then, the only thing I was really good at in school was English. So all I'm bringing to that brawl is Shakespeare. What do I do with that? <laughs> Getting punched, like, why art thou hurt me? <laughs> I did have good folks. They didn't tell me much about sex growing up, which was weird, because when I was young, I had imagination. I remember when I was seven years old, my cousin was pregnant. I didn't know how babies were created. Almost my mom told me there was a kid inside her stomach. I was scared the hell out of me, because such as eating children. <laughs> Yeah, by seven months, she was huge. It's like, get this woman a pizza. I could be next. Come on. <laughs> Coming over to visit, I'm trying to get my little sister to look taster than me. That's not normal. <laughs> Standing there like, Kyla, put chocolate syrup over yourself. She'll be here soon, all right? <laughs> like, my parents were so conservative. The only thing they ever told me about the birds and the bees was when I was nine years old. And this is what they said. They're like, Mike, um, did you know that you came out because of romance? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Like, what do I do with that knowledge? And now I'm just assuming what? My dad handed her a rose and she was so impressed I fell out? Because I know it's tough. Like, I know it's a tough thing to approach your kids with that topic. Like, I, w I met one woman who was so nervous about telling her 16-year-old daughter that instead she offered her 30 grand to keep her virginity until she's 18. I know 30 grand, that's insane, right? I kept mine for free. 
I gotta learn some tips from this kid. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I do have good folks. They didn't, uh, they didn't tell me, they didn't actually teach me how to cook either, right? They're, or build. Like my dad, he's really good with his hands. And he didn't teach me any of that. Like I swear, at my place, if the toilet doesn't work, I move. <laughs> you know, these are soft hands. If you high five me, it's comfortable, right? <laughs> And my mom never taught me how to cook either because she was a control freak. She thought I'd mess it all up, right? And like sometimes I'd get her to try to teach me, like teach me something. But the only thing she'd ever let me do was like menial tasks, right? Like one time she let me cut the tomatoes. You know, so I was just sitting there, I remember just cutting these tomatoes. And right in the middle, she actually flipped out on me. Just looked over, was like, you're cutting them all wrong. <laughs> like it's getting smaller, I can't be that far off, you know? <laughs> It's not like you handed me a tomato, turned around, looked back, and saw me the bigger tomato. <laughs> yeah, and then she's one of those moms, by the time supper starts, you go back to her pleasant self, and she like to give me credit, standing there like, guess who helped me with dinner tonight? <laughs> That's right, it's my son who's in the corner crying. <laughs> so needless to say, I had a lot of frozen dinners when I moved out. <laughs> Which is also the same time I stopped saying grace, you know, because there's nothing more pathetic than thanking the Lord for a hungry man.